What's up guys? So a quick update on the Jeep that some of you Wrangler owners might find helpful. So uh, quick background, my Jeep's got 50,000 miles on it and then after you know this much mileage I've been having some steering issues so I had a lot of shaking at one point, really uneven tire wear and then just a whole host of problems. So one of the first things I did was I um, had to kind of fix the front end uh, toe alignment. What I found that was um, I had aftermarket wheels at one point and it had a you know wider width and a more aggressive offset. So I think that kind of contributed to some uh, premature wear of the ball joints. And then I figured that out because um, once I had replaced uh, the tie rod, uh, no matter how much I set the tie rod settings, like the Jeep just would not hold the alignment. The toe settings would always get out of whack. So then um, between replacing the tie rod and the ball joints, um, I, you know, the tire wear was completely gone and the Jeep just tracked so much straighter. Um, there were less grinding noises. I, I had some weird noises going on. But yeah, if you have, um, you know, some shaking and, you know, your alignment's not, you know, holding or you got tire wear, uh, definitely check the alignment settings um, and then it, if your alignment is not holding you got to replace the ball joints uh, the ball joints were not an easy job um, it just took a lot of uh, banging and um, just to get the old ones out and to press the new ones in not a fun job um, you got to remove the axles and a whole bunch of other parts but you know you got to do it um, especially if your Jeep is modified um, you know these components wear out earlier so yeah tie rod was which is this guy right here and then the ball joints were my first thing to replace and then along with that I also replaced the track bar which is that other red uh, item in the back the, the stock track bar from Jeep is extremely thin and flimsy like when you compare on uh, this aftermarket track bar um, it's just so much more beefy and stiff and it's incredible what a difference it makes um, before with the soft track bar it always felt like the wheel the steering wheel was kind of disconnected from what the tires were doing like it just didn't feel you know very confident whenever you turn the steering wheel but with the stiffer track bar you know the inputs that you put into the wheel um, you can kind of feel you know the front tires um, responding appropriately so I definitely recommend getting an adjustable uh, heavy-duty track bar the other thing is once you lift your Jeep you know your axle will kind of swing to the side um, so having an adjustable track bar also kind of helps to realign um, and center the front axle so um, what I have right now is um, the Steer Smarts Yeti tie rod and um, the Steer Smarts Ready Yeti uh, track bar. And then so far, I definitely recommend this brand. They're extremely heavy duty. Um, and it, it just seems like these items are built to last. So what I'm going to do today is also replace my drag link, which kind of connects the steering box to the knuckle. And right now, um, after replacing all the other steering components, um, I still kind of developed a slight shake at speed. It's, it's not too bad, but I can definitely feel that something's worn out. So um, I'm going to you know, replace the OEM uh, drag link with the Steer Smarts uh, Yeti drag link and um, you know, we'll see what a difference that makes. Hopefully it'll kind of fix all the shaking problems and my Jeep will feel brand new again. So here's a box that the new drag link came in. Uh, pretty well packaged, a lot of cardboard. Then you can see here you have your two drag link ends and then um, I chose an option with the Griffin heavy duty steering attenuator. I heard that this kind of eliminates a lot of 
the harsh feedback you get in the steering wheel, especially when hitting large bumps and it's just a lot more controlled when driving. So again, uh, instead of just getting a standard solid drag link, I um, got one with the attenuator. So we'll see if um, you know this has, this meets all the hype that people are saying um, uh, it has and if it's worth it. The difference between you know the standard drag link and the one with the attenuator was about two hundred dollars, so it's definitely not a cheap upgrade, um, but hopefully it's worth it. So yeah, let's take out the old one and then get the new one back in. All right, so we got the wheel off, and basically all we got to do is take out this nut right here. There's a drag link. This nut is a 21 millimeter, and there's another 21 millimeter up there on the other end of the drag link, which connects to the pitman arm. So I think all we gotta do is you guys take those out, and drag link should pop right out. And one more thing I'm gonna do since I got you know the wheel off and I got access to my suspension is I'm gonna lift the Jeep a little bit. So I actually have um, aftermarket rock crawler rock crawler springs. So these are. Um, the 2.5 inch lift for a two door, which is the same spring they sell for the four door, but on the four door they label it as a 1.5 inch lift. So uh, when I first installed these springs, um, the lift height was great. If I measure from the bottom of the pinch seam to the floor, when I first installed it, it was over 19 inches. Um, and then since then it's settled quite a bit right now. I'm sitting at eight and three quarters inch in the front and the back also sagged a little bit So what I'm gonna do is you know before I put these rock crawler springs in I actually had um, a TerraFlex uh, leveling kit installed when I had my OEM spring still in there um, but when I put in the rock crawlers um, I didn't need these spacers anymore since um, you know the, the lift was actually even more than when I had um, this lift in but you know since the rock crawler springs have settled I'm going to put in the TerraFlex lift uh, spacers back in and then that should give me you know two inches of lift again so if I like, just take my measuring tape and measure it you can see that you know this um, two spacers they're kind of you can separate them but when you stack them together um, the two one inch spacers uh, they equal two inches so hopefully I'll be you know if I'm sitting at 18 and three quarters right now I'll get back to uh, 20 and three quarters which will be you know a nice lift um, you know especially since I take this Jeep off-roading a lot I just want that comfort factor knowing I'm not gonna scrape the bottom too much so yeah let's uh, get into it all right so I need to take a spring out to put in the spacers and I didn't feel like unbolting the shock and everything else so I just attach my little spring compressors just to kind of hold the spring in and I disconnected my sway bar so hopefully that'll be enough for the spring to just pop out uh, as soon as I drop the axle so let's try that just lowering the axle see if it comes out Alright guys, so I got the spacers in and it was exactly two inches lift that I got. Um, so before, as you recall, sitting at 18 and seven three quarters um, from the pinch seam down to the floor and now I'm at 20 and three quarters so the result was expected so that's good.
And then right after um, you're putting the spacers in, I also undid the track bar bolt. Um, and then I loosened all of the control arm suspension bolt just to relieve the tension from the bushings. And then, you know, I just gave the Jeep a little wiggle just to settle it. Um, so like once you raise or lower the Jeep, if you don't release the tension on the bushings, then you're gonna kind of wind up with some binding and potential squeaking. So yeah, I just undid all the control arm bushings, wiggle the Jeep, and then tighten them back up. And then um, sure enough, the track part bolt also needed some adjustment. So I took out the bolt and then, you know, the hole was only misaligned maybe like two millimeters after I settled the Jeep. So I just kind of took the adjuster sleeve and then lengthened the track bar by two millimeters. So lined up within the hole perfectly. And then put the bolt back in and torque it down nice and tight to the uh, specified 125 foot pounds. And then now we can move on to the drag link. So I already took out the bolt on the top as a 21 millimeter. And then I also took out the 21 millimeter here and then usually I use a ball joint separator to pop them out. Um, this one just popped out instantly. Um, so luckily I didn't have to, you know, deal with any crazy or scary bangs. But uh, yeah, let's uh, now take out um, the other end and then I'll show you how the original bar compares to the new uh, Yeti drag link. All right, here's the uh, two bars compared side by side. Man, this new one's beefy, so the old bar, just the uh, attenuator is tenor section away as much as this whole thing. So, um, what I'm going to do is, you know, put some anti-seize on these threads first, um, just so, you know, there's no rust issues when we need to adjust this down the line in the future. And then also pump some grease into uh, these Zerk fittings here. And then we can pop this new guy right in. And then, yeah, just one more time, you can really compare the thickness, so... Big difference. The Yeti bars, I'd say, at least 50% thicker. Alright, so we got the grease gun attached to the Zerk fitting. And then, we're just gonna keep pumping until we see the green grease come out. And then there it is. And then to pop it off, just angle it and pull. All right, so we're back on the road now to do a some high speed test. So uh, initial thoughts, uh, the on center or off center feel is pretty much the same as the stock drag link. There's still a little bit of dead zone, but I mean, I think it's pretty normal for like the steering setup in this uh, type of vehicle. And then but once you get off center, um, the way the steering wheel loads up, um, the feel is honestly the same. I think the biggest difference is that the wheel overall is just a lot smoother now. There's no vibrations. Um, we're at a pretty high rate of speed now. And definitely tell that all of the previous shaking that was on the wheel has been eliminated. So that definitely tells me that the old uh, drag link was clearly worn out. Uh, so yeah, I think it was definitely good for replacement and pretty happy with the way this new bar is performing so far. Um, and then another note of the attenuator. Um, I can definitely feel that there is some difference in having it. Previously when I used to hit some large dips, um, the whole Jeep would just kind of feel unsettled and make a lot of noise, shake. It just felt like you're about to you know, crash into something. But like now when you hit like these large bumps or something, um, you know, it's pretty crazy that like, the Jeep is so quiet. You just hear a quiet thump rather than like the whole structure shaking down. Um, so that I'm pretty amazing about it. So, 
Um, I don't know if you know the attenuator by itself was where it's upgraded compared to the standard drag link. Um, especially when you drive driving a smooth road, you might not notice too much of a difference. But I bet for those of you who live in an area where the roads are not maintained as well, or if you're driving on a lot of gravel or washboard type of roads, it probably makes a massive difference. But you're yeah, just telling, um, by the way, it's performing on you know like a smooth road hitting you know some minor bumps here and there and I think definitely is um, worth purchasing. We'll see how long it um, actually lasts um, from a reliability standpoint but the initial uh, reaction um, is pretty positive. Um, definitely pleased with the Yeti uh, drag link. I just want to give some final thoughts. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the Steersmart's products. Between the tie rod, their track bar, and now just drag link, the Jeep is extremely stable. Um, you know, going at highway speeds. Before it was pretty you know, shaky, um, a lot of wandering the lanes. But you know, between these three products, like it feels like a completely transformed car. I'm not gonna compare it to a sports car. Um, with like precise steering or anything, but compared to what it was, what it was when it was in stock, and especially when after 50,000 miles, you know, some of the components got worn out, it's a completely night day difference. So, yeah, if, you're, if you need to upgrade any of your existing or worn out components, um, I would not hesitate to go with the Steer Smart products. Um, worked for me, so hopefully, you guys found this video helpful. It, uh, please like and subscribe for more cheap and other sports car content coming in the future.